The Waterdrop A1 is one of the fanciest countertop RO systems you can buy right now. It heats your water, chills your water, shows you real-time TDS readings, and costs almost as much as a decent fridge. But the real question is, does all that mean better, safer drinking water? Or are you just paying for fancy features and marketing? To find out, I bought a brand new A1 and sent before and after filtration samples to a certified lab to see exactly what it removed and what it didn't. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how the Waterdrop A1 works and what makes it different from other countertop RO units, my independent lab results, which contaminants it removed, which it reduced, and what happened to pH hardness and TDS, whether dichloromethane or any other surprise contaminants showed up in my post filtration sample and how the A1 earned its 9.12 overall score based on contaminant reduction, filtration rate, design, setup, maintenance, and company policies. So if you appreciate data-driven testing and reviews like this, tap the like button to let me know I should keep doing more of these types of projects. Now let's start with price because I know that's always top of mind and the Waterdrop A1 sits at the higher end of the spectrum for countertop reverse osmosis systems. At the time of recording, it costs $649 at full price, and although that upfront cost is pretty steep, like many other countertop ROs, it's actually pretty affordable in terms of ongoing cost. Based on the rated capacities and prices of the replacement filters, I calculated an ongoing maintenance cost of around 27 cents per gallon. The CF filter is rated for 225 gallons and the RO membrane for 550 gallons under typical use, though of course this can vary depending on the source water. So yes, it's expensive up front, but the ongoing spend is still very reasonable in comparison to other water filters. It's also good to mention here that I've noticed Waterdrop always seems to be running some type of sale. So I'll drop a link to the A1 in the description so you can see what kind of discount is currently available. The A1 is a plug and play countertop reverse osmosis system. There's no plumbing, no drilling, no under sink install. And if you're brand new to countertop reverse osmosis systems, Here's a quick rundown of how it works. You fill the tap water tank with your source water. An internal pump pushes that water through a pre-filter and then through an RO membrane that can remove dissolved contaminants down to 0.0001 microns. Purified water is stored in two internal tanks and you can dispense it cold, room temp, or hot right from the front panel. Inside those internal tanks, the system uses dual UV lights to help control bacterial growth over time. Just to be clear though, this isn't designed to make microbiologically unsafe water safe. The UV is there to keep the tanks clean, not disinfect stream or pond water going into the system. It should only be used with treated water that's already been disinfected, which is disclosed in the user manual. In terms of key features, the A1 gives you seven stages of treatment if you count each media layer into the UV. Two layers of mechanical filtration, two layers of carbon, a scale inhibitor, the RO membrane, plus those internal UV stages. Multiple temperature presets from chilled up to around 203 degrees Fahrenheit, so you can go straight from filter to tea or coffee without boiling. Several volume presets, so you can dispense a fixed amount of water with one button press. A TDS display, so you can see how well the system is performing, and a filter life indicator with alerts when it's time for replacement. Most importantly, from a safety standpoint, the A1 is now certified by IAPMO to NSF ANSI 58 for TDS reduction and NSF ANSI 372 for lead-free materials. That means it's passed extraction testing for material safety, and it has at least one verified performance certification for TDS, which is arguably the most important for any RO system. Let's talk about what the Waterdrop A1 does well, because there are quite a few things I like about it. Most importantly, from a performance perspective, it did an excellent job in my lab testing. It either removed or greatly reduced every health-related contaminant that showed up in my baseline water, including uranium, fluoride, metals, and nitrate. And I'll go through the data in more detail here in a minute in the test results section. And they've done a great job with the user experience for this one. Like I mentioned, the digital display gives you filter life, TDS readings, temperature presets, and volume options. 
There's even a child lock, which is important on a system that dispenses near boiling water. Maintenance is also about as simple as it gets on a countertop RO unit. You only have two cartridges to replace, and the system tracks filter life on screen so you don't have to remember dates or track usage. Finally, the Waterdrop A1 is reasonably efficient for a countertop RO system. With a 2 to 1 pure to wastewater ratio, it wastes 1 gallon for every 2 gallons of purified water produced. That's not best in class, but it's still much better than a lot of traditional under sink systems that can waste 3 to 4 four gallons for every gallon purified. Now for the drawbacks, because this unit definitely isn't perfect. The first big one is that there's no remineralization stage. A lot of modern countertop RO systems have an option to add a small amount of calcium, magnesium, or other alkalizing minerals back into the water after RO. The A1 doesn't. There's no built-in remineralization cartridge and no upgrade option. That leads directly into the second con, the purified water is demineralized and slightly acidic. In my testing, pH dropped from 7.6 down to 6.5, total hardness went from nearly 95 ppm down to under 2 ppm, and total dissolved solids were reduced by over 95% from 138 ppm down to 6. Now that's the expected result for RO, but some people might find that the water tastes flat or acidic. Third, the A1 is not fast and we measured its filtration rate at about 0.042 gallons per minute. It's fine for filling glass by glass like the unit is intended to do, but if you need a larger volume, you're gonna be waiting a bit. Fourth, while the setup is easier than any under sink install, the initial flush process takes a long time. The system automates all the flushing, but you have to keep emptying and refilling the tap water tank while it runs. It took 41 minutes, which is quite a bit longer than the 30 minutes promised in the manual. And finally, while the unit does have an NSFANCY 58 certification for TDS reduction, it's only certified for that one performance claim. The rest of the contaminant reduction claims are not independently certified, which if you've watched my videos for some time, you'll know is something I always like to see, especially for more expensive units like this. Now let's get to the fun part and look at my lab results. In my baseline water, the lab detected 10 contaminants with potential health effects. Two of them were above the most conservative health guideline levels, uranium 0.0322 ppm, HGL is zero, fluoride 1.4 ppm, HGL is 0.799 ppm. Other health-related contaminants were present, though below their respective HGLs, and included sulfate, nitrate, zinc, strontium, copper, barium, and molybdenum. After filtration, both fluoride and uranium were reduced to below the reporting limit. Additionally, copper, molybdenum, zinc, strontium, sulfate, and phosphorus were also all reduced to below the reporting limit. Barium was reduced from 0.031 ppm down to 0.0055 ppm and 82% reduction. Nitrate was reduced from 2.6 ppm down to 0.2 ppm, about a 92% reduction. And an on-site chlorine test strip showed that there was no chlorine left after filtration. So from a pure contaminant reduction standpoint, this is exactly what I'd expect from a properly functioning RO system. Now, you may or may not have seen this, but back in 2023, a couple of other independent reviewers lab tested the water drop A1 and found dichloromethane, aka methylene chloride, in the filtered water. It's a man-made, volatile organic compound, a probable carcinogen, and obviously not something you'd ever want showing up in your drinking water. So of course, I wanted to see if this was still an issue or not. However, in my test, dichloromethane was not detected at all in the post-filtration sample. And there also weren't any other unexpected or unwanted contaminants introduced by the system. Now, whether water drop changed materials, updated production methods, or whether those earlier findings were tied to a specific batch of units, I can't say for sure. What I can say is that my sample showed no evidence whatsoever of dichloromethane or any other similar VOCs. And there's one more really important piece of info here. I confirmed directly with the NSF that methylene chloride is one of the contaminants included in the extraction testing portion of certification under NSF ANSI standard 58. That means that for the A1 to receive its current NSF 58 certification from IATMO, it had to pass rigorous extraction tests proving it does not leach methylene chloride, 
aka dichloromethane. If it did, it simply would not have earned the certification. So between my independent lab results and that confirmation from my Atmo, it seems clear that the issue is no longer present in the water drop A1 units being sold today. Now let's talk about the detections relating to aesthetic rather than health risks. The A1 eliminated chlorine and reduced total dissolved solids by 95.65% from 138 down to 6 ppm. The total dissolved solids it removed includes minerals like calcium, which was reduced by 98% from 26.9 ppm down to 0.5 ppm. Magnesium from 6.58 ppm down to below the reporting limit. Bicarbonate from 98.37 ppm down to 10.99 ppm, an 88% reduction. Carbonate, which was reduced by 99%, from 0.18 down to 0.0016 ppm, and sodium from 10.7 down to 1.22 ppm, and 88% reduction. And because of this, the pH dropped from 7.6 to a slightly acidic 6.5. Again, this is the expected result for RO without remineralization. Now let's look at how the water drop A1 performed in our data-driven scoring system and why it earned the score it did. It got a 9.54 in the contaminant reduction category. This is the highest weighted category in my scoring system, as you'd imagine, and the water drop A1 did really well here. My top score lab results gave it a 9.8 for health related contaminants because it removed or drastically reduced everything we detected in the baseline sample. It scored an eight for aesthetics because the water is greatly demineralized and the pH noticeably drops below neutral. And for certifications, it scored an eight because while it is certified to NSF 58, that certification only covers a fraction of the contaminants water drop advertises it for. It scored 9.4 in the design category, which takes into account build quality and material safety. The A1 scored 9 for component quality, NSF approved plastics, solid construction, and a modern, easy to use interface. It earned a 10 for material safety certifications, thanks to its NSF 372 cert for lead free construction, and NSF 58 cert, which includes that extraction testing to make sure it's not leaching anything into your water. It scored a lower 7 in the filtration rate category, where we measured a flow rate of 0.042 gallons per minute. Setup is straightforward, just open it up, insert the filters, and run the flush cycle. The reason it scored an 8 instead of something higher is because that flush cycle took 41 minutes requiring multiple tank refills. The countdown timer on the display does make it easier, but still it takes some babying. The A1 absolutely shines in the maintenance category where it scored a perfect 10 in both subcategories. It scored a 10 for servicing requirements because maintenance is minimal, only two filters, and the system gives you clear change alerts so you don't have to track anything manually. And it scored a 10 for cost with an ongoing cost of about 27 cents per gallon. And finally, company policies, things like warranty, maintenance, and shipping, make up a small but important piece of the scoring. It got an 8.5 for its one year warranty, which is pretty standard. For shipping, it got a 9.5 since economy shipping is free to most of the continental US with upgrade options if you want it faster. And Waterdrop's 30 day return policy earned it an eight. Put together, those give Waterdrop an overall company score of 8.65. The water drop A1 performed really well in my testing, but it's not going to be the right fit for everyone. You might want to skip this system if you dislike the taste of very low mineral content water, or you know you prefer water with natural hardness like spring water. You want a system with extensive contaminant reduction certifications for more than just one parameter. In that case, AquaTrue is still the top performer in my scoring system and the most extensively certified countertop RO system I've found. You want faster filtration and dispensing and plan to fill larger jugs or pots frequently. The A1's slower filtration and dispensing rates will get annoying. You specifically want your purified water stored in glass, not plastic. The A1 stores treated water in internal plastic tanks. So if none of those things are deal breakers for you, is the water drop A1 a good choice? 
My testing and scoring system say yes, but with a few caveats. On the plus side, it scored 9.12 overall, which puts it firmly in the excellent category. It did an outstanding job reducing contaminants, including fluoride, uranium, and other health-related contaminants in my water. It did not show any dichloromethane or other surprise contaminants in the filtered water, and holds official certification to NSFANCY standard 58. It's super easy to use, provides hot, and cold water on demand, has a really modern touchscreen interface, and reasonable ongoing costs. On the downside, it's expensive up front. It does not remineralize the water, so you'll have to handle that separately if you care about alkalinity and taste. It's only certified for TDS reduction under NSF58, not for every individual contaminant water drop lists in its marketing. And it's on the slower side in terms of filtration rate. But if you love the idea of filtered hot and cold water on demand, you're okay with demineralized water, and you want something that's easy to maintain with strong, real-world performance, the A1 is a solid choice. However, if you'd rather a system with more robust certifications and an external glass collection tank, I'd recommend the AquaTrue Carafe instead. If you want to see how that one performed in our testing, stick around and watch the next video coming up right now. Click or tap to keep watching.